so just go start the live stream workshop. So why, why film protest? I've been filming protests and for campaign groups since 1993. Um, I believe that um, the camera is like a nonviolent weapon to help create change. It lets people know what is going on. It can educate people about the issues. It can be a witness to behavior that's um, happening during protests um, and show what the police or the security are doing. It can empower protesters by giving them a voice. And it also means that you're, um, the campaign group is not relying on the mainstream media to come and tell your story. It's uh, do it yourself, make your own media and get it out there. And it can inspire in people, it can inspire people to get involved. So why live stream? Well, with live streaming, the, um, you get a much lar larger audience with Facebook due to the algorithms and notifications that people get when they go onto Facebook. Um, they immediately get the story. They're not waiting for you to go home and to edit um, and then post it out um, a day or two later. Um, when actions are happening near you, if your other um, campaigners see it, they may come and join you. Um, if people can't get to the action or they're not in your area, it still means that they can join in by watching and they could share that to help you and they can send messages of support. Also, if you do get arrested, then your story has already got out there. It's already on social media. And um, but also because of that, just take be aware that when you are live streaming, the police and the security can be watching that, too. So don't start live streams too early if actions are about to happen, which um, could be stopped by the police knowing about it. So this is the same action being posted onto Facebook. The, the, the picture on the left is um, some photographs and text as a Facebook post. And I just wanted to show the comparison between that and a live stream. So on the right is the live stream. So the post had sort of a reach of nearly 8,000 on the left, but on with the live stream, it had a reach, it went like over 32,000 people saw, saw that post go through. Um, and then the engagements, you've got 377 for the photographs, four, nearly four and a half thousand for the um, engagements. So you can just see how many different um, interactions you've got. 14 shares of the one with photographs, 336 people shared when there was a long live stream there that they could share out to, um, to their own um, groups. So what do you need? What equipment do you need to live stream? So you can get away with live streaming with just a phone. So, um, you know, that's the most basic thing. As long as you've got a, a, a smartphone and some data, you can live stream. Um, so I'm just going to mention a few extras that you could use, which could um, improve the quality, but they're not essentials. So first of all, you could use the headphones that come with your um, phone, which I think Kate and Bob talked about earlier. So basic headphones that plug in that have got the microphone. That microphone will be better than using the, the microphone that's on the end of your phone. And then also you could use a wind sock to help protect the mic from the wind buffeting it. So on the left, I've shown a sort of expensive mic that you can plug into your camera, but on the right, you've got the headphones and this is a homemade windshield that somebody put around a little piece of furry fabric that they just put over their mic. If you do anything like this, always record a quick clip and listen back to it to make sure that you're not blocking the audio and that the, the audio is improved. So any, any mic you're plugging in, do a quick check with it before you go and do your whole job. Some more kit, but again, remember you can just use your phone. You could get a phone holder to help um, hold the phone steady and you could put it on a monopod or tripod. And also think about lighting. In the winter in the UK, it gets dark very early in the evening. So you could use top lights or you could use a torch or you could even use um, somebody else's phone light just to shine onto the people that you're trying to film just to improve that light. If you're in daylight, just think about using the available light. So I think this has been mentioned earlier today, but you know, make sure that the light is on people's faces, they're not backlit. Um, and yeah, you use the available light that you can um, that you can find. 
So preparations for a live stream. Before you go out and live stream, it's really important to charge your phone, try and have it at 100% before you start. And also if you've got a battery pack, that means that you can boost your phone power before you start. You also need to make sure that you have enough data on your phone. So I think it uses about roughly about a gigabyte per hour for live streaming. You need to make sure for live streaming that you have access to Facebook, uh, the Facebook site that you want to live stream to. So make sure that the, the person that runs that live stream, that Facebook site can add you to that and you need to accept the um, becoming an editor on that Facebook group before you can live stream to it. It's good to have the contact of who is organizing the event and know where you've got to meet them. Try and get there beforehand so that you can meet and find people who are good to interview and practice live streaming beforehand as well. Go out and practice, just get used to talking um, to the camera and um, talking whilst walking and filming what's going on around you. It's really helpful as well if you can find someone to help you live stream. So be prepared, actions can last longer than you expect. Um, I usually wear a backpack when I'm going off to film an action, and this is so that my hands are free for filming. I'm not trying to leave a bag on the floor somewhere or pick it up and carry it whilst trying to live stream. So my hands are free to hold the phone. Um, have your power bank and your cable to charge your phone. I usually charge my phone right up until when I'm about to start filming so that it can last as long as possible. I usually arrive early. And then I try and find out who at the action is, is good to interview. So I'll go and talk to lots of people. I'll ask if they are okay to be filmed during the action. And if you can't do this and you're already live streaming, I usually point at the action and then ask somebody off to one side, are you okay to be filmed for an interview? So that I'm not pointing it at them while I ask if they're okay. So point it away from them, maybe point at a placard or the action itself whilst asking for interviews from people so that you're not putting them on the spot. Um, find out what the action plan is. So you might want to know if there's going to be some speeches, where might it be good for you to stand to get those speeches? Is there a march from this place to this place? And where do you need to be at what time? And then if you're filming things like speeches, can you try and get film them so that the sun is on your back so that the people are, um, who are doing the speech are facing the sun and then they're gonna be correctly lit. So before you start live streaming, if you write out the text that you want to go on your Facebook post and I save it in the notes on my phone, that will include the title, the description, um, and then tags or hashtags. So if I'm trying to add, um, do the at sign in different groups or, or mention people in it, then put all of that into the notes on your phone. This is partly because sometimes when you get, try to go live, it doesn't work first time and you don't want to be, as the action starting quickly, trying to type it all in again. So save it on your phone and then you can copy that and paste it into the Facebook post. I also check whether I've got a 4G signal. And if I have, then I turn the Wi-Fi off. This means that it's a more solid connection and the quality of the footage that's going out is going to be better. And then the last thing that I do before I go live is I put do not disturb on your phone and that stops phone calls coming in, which can actually cut the stream while you're live streaming. So it's worth doing that. I'm going to play a short video. It's one minute long. I'm going to tell you um, this is the steps that I do before I live stream on Facebook. So first of all, I find Facebook app on my phone and I go to the page I want to stream to. So this is Extinction Rebellion Oxford. And then I have a button there which says live and I click on that. It doesn't make me live straight away. I then go and find in my notes, the text that I've written that I want to be on the Facebook post. With Facebook, you can edit this afterwards, after the live stream if you need to. Go back to Facebook and tap and paste that into the description. Once it's in there, I turn it landscape and I want both the words and the picture to be in landscape before I hit that go live button. Once it's live, you can see how long you've been live 
And if you've got viewers, the number there will come up, how many viewers you have. At the end, press save and save, or finish, then save, and then share. And that saves, saves the live stream to your phone if you've got space on your phone for it. And then the share is saving it to Facebook. And it may take several minutes before it's uploaded there if it's a longer stream. Then check it's there. Then you've got a share button at the bottom there and you can find, get the link from there and share that out as widely as possible. Let people know that you've been live streaming. I'm just gonna play that video one more time because this is a crucial bit of, of live streaming. So first of all, go to the app on your phone for Facebook. And then find the page, the group that you want to stream to. And touch on the live button. Then you want to go and find the text that you've written, which is the title and the description of the action and the at signs and the hashtags. And copy that. And then go back to Facebook and paste it in the description. Once it's pasted in, you click done. Now turn your phone to landscape. Make sure the picture and the text both go to landscape. If they don't, you might need to go to your settings and make sure that auto rotate is on. Check you've gone live. When, and when you finish, press finish. and save, that saves it to your phone. Make sure you've got space on your phone to, to save it and then press share. And then go to Facebook and check that it's all up there and saved. Get your share link and share that out. Hope that's clear. So this is all that I've just said. I won't go through it again, but I just felt that on the PowerPoint, then you can actually read through it rather than it be um, over the video. So um, live streaming to Instagram and Twitter have a few changes for that. Um, there is a link here for um, how to live stream for, to all three, which is an XR document on how to live stream, which I hope will get shared in the chat. And Garant, so you you here at the moment to just um, say how Instagram and Twitter are slightly different. Okay, hi guys. Uh, happy to be back again here today. Uh, so basically, uh, Twitter and uh, and Facebook and Instagram lives are a little bit different in such a way that uh, on how to get to live. Uh, you see, like for Facebook. It, it already has a, an icon written uh, live, but for Twitter and Instagram, it's not as easy to find at the live section. So um, I'll go through to show you how to do that, although I, sh I did yesterday, but let us do a recap. And uh, maybe if I share my screen for a minute. Cool. So this is my phone screen. Hope everyone can see. It's, uh, for uh, Twitter, you click on the Twitter uh, application. Uh, when it opens, click on the uh, that icon, the plus icon. When you click on that plus icon, you click on tweet. When you click on tweet, there's a camera icon here. So you click on that camera icon. When you do that, uh, it will bring such a thing. Then you swipe left. There's a live section there. Then you repeat everything that uh, Zoe has said. You can put your, what is happening? Like you can uh, copy and paste. You can say trials. Uh, then after that, uh, go back. Then you can click go live. You go live uh basically uh can like you can do anything uh, whatever so you said you can change it to last landscape or any other mode then when you're done you click on the um x icon 
on the top left there. Okay, it's 7 p.m. Let me try it down. Uh, just a minute. I'm trying to increase my. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, after that, when you're done, you click on that icon. You click, you click on stop broadcast. I guess that's clear. Then on Instagram, you go on the Instagram app, you click on the Instagram app, uh, you click on the uh, plus or addition icon up there. When you click on that, it will, uh, sorry. When you click when you click on that, it will bring you to such um, a page. Down here, there's a place written post, story, reels, and live. So you scroll until you get live. When you get live, you can click, you can um, click on these bars here. Okay, if you can see my uh, cursor, you click there, then you can add uh, whatever, like Zoe was saying, you can have your own uh, description of what uh, the, 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 the live is all about. You just put it over there. Then after that, after you added the title, you click on this icon here. Then it will prompt you to see if the connection is okay. Then after some few minutes, it will write you are now live. You can see the uh, number, like how many minutes you've been live by clicking this um, pink or not so sure what color is this uh, icon there. Then when you're done, uh, you click on the X uh, icon there. Click that one. It will ask you if you need to end the live. Then you click end the live. Then you can share it to your IGTV or you can discard media. For me, I'll discard the media and uh, I will be good. So that's all for uh, uh, the difference on how to get to live session on Twitter and Instagram.